Thank you for joining us for another Power Pack message from Rev. Edmond Seki Brown. We hope you'll be blessed and transformed by this message. Now, let's go into the message. After me, Lord Jesus, speak to me, touch my heart, and change my life. Let me continue with our redemptive right. Say, my redemptive right. We were looking at Ephesians. I'll read Ephesians 1 7. That in whom we have redemption, the word whom just refer to Jesus Christ. We have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. All right? In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Based on this scripture, we have been dealing with the subject redemption. Uh, we said a few things about redemption. Today, I want to proceed to the uh, redemptive rights. One of them is in the book of Revelation. And I'm reading the chapter 5 and the verse number 9 and 10. This is, and they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and prince, priests to our God and we shall reign on earth. So they, ain't, they were speaking to Jesus Christ was the one who is being addressed in this scripture. Yes, Jesus addressed now, we know it's Jesus because he's the one who shed his blood. Are we all right? The angels did not die. They didn't pour out their blood. It's Jesus. So Jesus has redeemed us by his blood. And so he has made us kings and priests. And the reason he made us king and priest is for us to reign on the earth. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. All right, now what you do in Bible study or teaching meeting, you always turn to the scripture and read it. Even if you know it, read it. Because if you read, the more you read, the more revelation you get. Never go to a teaching service when they quote a scripture. I know I don't. Never. Familiarity with scripture will rob you of revelation. And the more you read along, the more comprehension becomes eminent in your life. Please, let that be your habit. Read every time. Read every time along. It's very important. Amen. So, second, uh, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own special people. So, there are how many things here? Four. Number one, we are a chosen generation. So we are redeemed. We are chosen generation. Number two, we are royal priesthood. Number three, a holy nation or a holy people. Okay? And then number four, God's special people. Praise his name. Hallelujah. We could stay on this for all month. But let's look at them again. We are a chosen generation, a chosen generation. Hallelujah. And then we are a royal priesthood. Not just priesthood, but royal priesthood. I, I hope you are trying to imbibe into this, uh, into this truth that, and also understand the connotation of the terms that are used to describe who we are now, who you are now. It is not what we are going to become. We are not going to become that when Christ appears. But that's who we are now. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Amen. Wow. That's why I'm above and still rising. Because these things are describing who we are. Amen. A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy people. God's special people. And what are we supposed to do? Claim that you may proclaim the praise of him. The word praise is 
is it about the greatness of God who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. So you see some kind of assignment that is described there for us, what we are called, what we are chosen, we've been made a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special people. And he wants us to show forth his greatness to the rest of the world. Are you understanding me? We show forth, we manifest the greatness of God to the world. Hallelujah. And then he says also that he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Um, so there's a change of the change of location. The change of location where we are now is the kingdom of light. Amen. All right. Then he said, we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. Hallelujah. Is somebody understanding that? Versteht ihr das? You could put it simply, we were nobodies, now we have become somebodies. Wir waren niemand und jetzt sind wir jemand. Nobodies has become somebodies. Niemand ist zu Very niemand important geworden. to God. Sehr wichtig um, für Gott. Jesus, we have obtained mercy. Wir haben Gnade bekommen. We did bekommen. not have mercy, but we have obtained mercy. Wir haben Gnade erlebt. Hallelujah. Now, this scripture gives us the uh, confirmation of us being redeemed as kings and priests. And so we have to now study who a priest is and who a king is. All these things are important to give us a real connotation of who God says we are. So number one, who is a priest? And what is the role of a priest? Amen. I don't want you to look at a priest like you know it to be. <laughs> but if we look at the role of the priesthood in the Old Testament, we see that their role was to act as, number one, mediators. Um, they were mediators between God and his people. And by doing so, they stimulated spiritual growth. They, they, they stimulated spiritual growth. These were officials chosen by God to stimulate spiritual growth and to stimulate worship among the people. Now, in our position as priests, as new covenant priests, that hasn't changed at all. It's still the same. It's still the same. I just want you to have a mindset that you are a person who is a mediator. You are a priest. You are a mediator between God and people. Between God and people. Amen. You are a mediator. Du bist ein Vermittler. Or you could say you are an intercessor. Du bist ein Einsteher. You are somebody that mediates between God and people. Du bist jemand, der vermittelt zwischen Gott you, und Menschen. And also has to stimulate und spirituality, spirituality, spiritual growth in people's life and stimulate worship in the life of people. In other words, your life, your words, your actions, your deeds should all promote these things as a priest. At the same time, you should be able to draw people to God. You should be able to draw people to God. Some of the things we would do as priests, number one, number one is to offer up our lives and our bodies personally as living sacrifice. Number one, we should offer up our lives and our bodies as a living sacrifice. Say after me, I need to offer myself, my life, personally as a living sacrifice. Romans 12:1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Why? The brethren are holy priests. So I beseech you by the message of God that you present your bodies 
a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service as a priest. It's your reasonable service. It's dein Gottesdienst. Your service to God. So to God. it's important we offer ourselves first. Wir müssen uns selber erst our lives unser Leben and our bodies to God. Zu A priest must be sold out to God. Ein Priest muss an zu <laughs> a priest must be completely sold out to God with his whole life and his whole body and everything he possesses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that kind of priest is the priest that brings to God the burdens of the people. He takes the burdens of the people and bring it to God. And the burdens, the burdens of the people is their sins. The burden of the people is their troubles. It includes their worries. It includes their needs, etc., etc. But the priest is supposed to carry it to God. Say, I'm a priest. Now, because you're a priest, you are supposed to carry the burdens, the sins, the needs, the trials, the problems of people to God. Von Menschen zu Gott bringen. Not to another man. Nicht zu anderen so you are not a gossiper, you are a priest. Du bist jemand, der lästert. Du bist ein Priester. A gossiper carries the burdens of people that he receives to other people. Ein Lässerer bringt die Sorgen <laughs> von den Menschen zu anderen Menschen. Once Mensch. you are that type of a person, du you are disqualified person, as a priest. Als ein Priester. The priest does not take the burdens and the needs and the trouble and the problems of the people as they tell him, as he takes them, he carries it to God and not to another person. Der Priester trägt die Sorgen der Menschen nicht zu anderen Menschen, aber zu Gott. Any priest who does that in the Old Testament in those days is He's in big time trouble. He'll be slain. Jeder, der das im Amen. Hat, are you with so me still? I'm trying to teach you to understand that you are a priest by redemption. And then you have to begin to stimulate what I'm called spiritual growth and worship among people. And one way you do that is you, number one, offering yourself to God as a living sacrifice. And we must know that you are supposed to take or be a moderator or an intercessor, somebody that carries the burden of the people and brings it to God. You don't carry the burden and bring it to another person. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5. It says you are also a living stone or living stones and you are built up spiritual house, a holy priesthood. A holy priesthood. You see? A holy priesthood. And what do we do? Yeah. Holy priesthood. And what do we do? What do we do as holy priesthood? To offer up spiritual what? Sacrifices which is acceptable to God through who? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you see what we are supposed to be doing? Offer up spiritual what? sacrifices that is acceptable to God and we do it through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Number two, number, number two, we offer sacrifices of praise and worship as a priest. Sacrifices of praise and worship. So we read that earlier, chosen generation, we offer sacrifices of praise and worship. The Bible says we, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Say after me, I'll bring sacrifice of praise into the house of God. So as a priest, I must be a worshiper. You must be a worshiper. Du musst ein Anbeter sein. So when you are in church, you need to worship. Wenn du in der Gemeinde bist, musst du anbeten. When you are home, you need to worship. Wenn du zu Hause bist, musst du anbeten. Worship is part of the things you're supposed to do as a priest. Anbetung ist eine Sache, die dazu gehört, wenn du ein Priester bist. Some people they never worship. Einige Menschen beten nie an. They just there. 
Die sind einfach nur da. When was the last time you worshipped? <laughs> now, for those of us who like prayer, when was the last time you worshipped? There's always a danger of people who like prayer, they don't even worship. As, as soon as they go into their closet, it's prayer. They have to talk to God about a problem or bind the devil to get away from them or deal with an issue. But I tell you, as a priest, as ein Priester, royal priesthood, as ein one of the things you should do is to offer worship. Musst du Anbetung darlegen. Hallelujah. You must learn to worship the Lord du musst lernen, Herrn anzubeten. and give him all the honor the reason he needs all die Ehre or he deserves. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Hebrea 13, 15. The Bible says by him through Jesus let us continually offer sacrifices of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his holy name perpetually that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to him hallelujah let us continuously offer the sacrifice of praise to God Sister Joy you got it let us continuously what offer Lass uns beständig Amen. Opfer des Lobes so not sometime, Nicht not manchmal, in the moment, but continuously we offer this sacrifice of praise and a worship unto the Lord, giving thanks to him because it's the fruit of our lips. Amen. Amen. Number, three, Number three. As a royal priesthood, we intercede and pray for others. As ein for, like Priester, the nations, ein, like the nations, Nation. uh, we pray for the church or some other. Intercession is part of what we do as a priest. First Timothy chapter 2, I want to read the verse 1 to 3. What do we do as a priest? We intercede. Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all who are in authority that's intercession here so we see praying for others as a priest we are praying for all men we are praying for kings in our case leaders of our nations and all those who are in authority, there are governments, and even in church or many other places where authorities are. And the reason is that we may lead a quiet and a peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. And the Bible says, for this is good. And it's acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Ezekiel 22 verse 30 Ezekiel. it says I sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for their lamb that I should not destroy it but I found none mm -hmm. did you get it or are you still searching for it Oh, you don't have an idea. It's always good to look for it. You have an idea of where I'm going to. Okay. So here, God says he's looking for a man. God sagt hier, ich suche für einen Amen. Mann. And the reason he's looking for the man, that the man will become an intercessor. Damit der Mann ein Einsteher wird. In other words, God will need an intercessor in order to act on behalf of men or the earth. God braucht Einsteher, damit er handeln kann. Are you understanding me? We have we have read the yeah, Lord's yeah. Prayer several times. A lot of people read the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, we are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. That, how many of you know the Lord's Prayer? You know that? Come on, shout, saying that. One, two, three, go. I can't hear you. Stop. 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 Stop means stop. Stop. Okay. You notice that you got to a place in the prayer and you are asking that God's will be done where? 
as it is, who is asking for that? Wer fragt? Who is asking? Wer fragt? The man. Der man. Is a man who is now interceding der man, der on behalf of the earth. <laughs> is the man interceding on behalf of the earth? Der Telling der God, please let your will be done on this earth God, as it is in heaven. Is so the man that is interceding. So man, the Lord's einsteht. prayer even tells us der that God always look forward to find a man that will stand in the gap between him and the earth on behalf of people. We see another example. Abraham had to intercede. Abraham must einstehen. Amen. Amen. So, a man that needs to stand in the gap Ein Mann, der in der Lücke muss, is what we have become by redemption. We are now God's men, God's also women. Royal priesthood. Ein we must intercede. Wir müssen einstehen. In other words, we can change the course of the earth. Wir können den Lauf der we can Welt change the course ändern. of this world. Wir den Lauf der Ooh, Erde the absence of Amen means you don't believe it. But that's just Christians in Germany or Christians here. But I tell you, I know Christians who are Christen changing the course of things that Lauf goes on in their nations, even in their community. We can change the course of things going in our community, in our nations. We can change it. In the Old Testament, a man called Elijah can stop the rain and touch the whole economy of a country. It was a farming. The economy was affected. It's one man who caused that to happen. He prayed again. The economy was okay. It took one man to change the economy. Yeah. yeah. He didn't need Corona to affect the economy. He just lifted up his hand and said, no rain three years by my words. That's all. Such level of authority is what the priest possess. Are you understanding me? When you are praying as an intercessor, know that you are a priest. You are a royal priest. God has put you there as, as someone who should negotiate, amen, between him and the earth. And you can do that if you understand it better. So when we are praying, we are not praying because we are fulfilling religious duties. We know that we are the royal priesthood. We are the priest today that God needs to rule in this nation to help us to change the course of this nation. He said, I sought for a man that would stand in the gap. I couldn't find one. But praise be the name of the Lord. Here we are, royal priesthood. Here we are, those that are ready to mediate between man and God. Here we are, those that are ready to intercede on behalf. Where there are intercessors, there's hope. Everywhere there are intercessors, there is hope. That's why, that's why in the Bible days, anybody that falls in trouble with sin, they first must look for the priest and bring their offering to the priest, for the priest to bring it before God, for God to raise their offering. Anytime they are in trouble with any of these issues that has to do with sin, to fight against destruction, the priest is the first they want to go to. That's how important you have become now. So wichtig bist du. A priest, I'm a priest. Oh yeah. Number four. Number four. We are to. The priest is to offer offerings of various kinds of offerings. The priest bietet verschiedene Arten von Opfer da. Various kinds of offerings. Verschiedene Arten von Opfer. Hallelujah. Acts chapter twenty, verse thirty-five. Twenty thirty-five. Various kinds of offerings. Verschiedene Arten von Opfer. Somebody read that for me. Bitte, jemand soll das bitte vorlesen. Otherwise, I read the thing myself. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In view of the special role of a priest in the New Testament, when you look at it in that context, they were required to maintain special standards of purity. And as new personal, these people were giving offerings to 
they brought uh, purity offerings, let me call it that way, with runs and things to purify people, and they give those offerings. But beside that, to the offerings that they offer, they offer the offering to show goodwill towards men. Okay? And the priests were supposed to do that, to do that goodwill towards men as part of their, uh, ladies and gentlemen, of their duties. And so here we see very clearly that giving out for the weak, to support the weak, giving also for the labor of God or the work of God is something we must do. We must do that to, to promote God's work and promote God's will and promote God's agenda as priest. Amen? So a priest doesn't go to the house of God or doesn't just leave empty handed. No, a priest must have something what? In his, in his hands to offer. Are you understanding me? Now, it is important that we know that it's required of a priest to live a pure life. All right? Let me touch on these and then I'll move on to one more thing a priest must do, the fifth one, and then uh, I'll see how much time I have left. A priest must live holy life. It is required from the priest. First Peter chapter 1 verse 15 to 16. Are we there? All right, who is reading for us? Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Read that again. First Peter one fifteen. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, be holy for I. So, so, so here, the analogy is very strong. Here's the analogy is very strong. The one who called us, what, who is the one who called us? Wer hat uns berufen? Come on, who called us? Wer hat uns berufen? Who called us? Wer hat uns berufen? And the Bible says he is what? Sagt, Holy. Er ist so if we are made royal priesthood, God has Priester called us to be a royal priesthood. He is a holy God. Berufen, and so Heiliger we are representing God and we are supposed to be what? Holy. And how are we supposed to be holy? In which area of our life? In all. In all, in jedem Bereich. You see that? Oh, holiness is not an exception. Heiligkeit ist keine Ausnahme. Amen. It's not an exception. Es ist keine Ausnahme. It's something that is demanded. Etwas, das von uns verlangt wird. So, always to be holy. Wir müssen immer heilig sein. Where are we supposed to be holy? Wo müssen wir heilig sein? In all. In jedem Bereich. Holy in all. The heilig word conversation. Alle. It's not just about talking, no. Es geht nicht nur um reden. <laughs> Conversation, no. But that word means your conduct. In oh, your conduct, your behavior. So we are holy in our mind, in our thoughts, in our behavior, in our conduct, in our relationship. It's so important as priest. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. First Thessalonica 4, verse 3. For it is the will of God... For it is the will of God, your sanctification. The word there talks about your purity, your holiness. It is God's will. Your sanctification is God's will. And that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Abstain from. So our sanctification, our purity, purity of your mind, your thoughts must be pure. Deine Gedanken müssen rein sein. Your thoughts must, if your thoughts are not pure, you're not holy. Holiness is the absence of any impurity in your life. So, see, you can increase in holiness but not in righteousness. Because righteousness is right standing before God. But holiness is closeness to God. And no one gets that close to God when he's thoughts are defined. Holiness is purity of the heart. So you can look 
very gorgeous outside. Du kannst von außen sehr gut but aussehen. your heart is not pure. Aber your heart is, is not pure. Dein Herz ist nicht There are too many things in your heart. So viele zu When you harbor evil in your heart, you harbor grief in your heart, you harbor offense in your heart, you harbor hate in your heart. When you become adamant to respond to the word of God, these things defy you. When you are always angry, when you are always angry, when you are always offended and hurt and aggression in your heart, these are things that defies the priest. Are you understanding? And so you need to understand this demand God is putting on a priest. And a royal priesthood for our work as a priest to be effective, these are some of the things we must work holiness. The fifth thing a priest must do, a priest must teach. A priest is a teacher. A priest is an instructor. 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 Yeah? He, he instructs, he teaches, he leads, he directs. That's a priest for you. Um, look at this with me. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 15. And uh, come with me to the verse number one to verse number three. Now the Spirit of God, the word Spirit is, the letter is capital S. If you check in your Bible, you see he's referring to the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear, hallelujah, hear me, Asa. Now, for you to understand at that time, the reforms that were coming by Asa in those days. I don't have time to tell you all the background, but at the point, Asa was reigning, um, if I'm not mistaken, in Judah, okay? Just background story. He was reigning in where? In Judah, and he was bringing up, there were reforms that were taking place because of some things that have gone on which were not right. That's just a little background for you to understand that. I don't need to bore you with all those history. You are not Bible student. So, you are just church members who came to, to worship God and go home. <laughs> so, but a background will help you. Amen. So, the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed, and then he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you. While you are with, with him. I like that. It's a bit difficult for Amelia to say amen because he's not always with the Lord. <laughs> but he said, the Lord is with you while you are. It sounds like James. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Hallelujah. So, so those people who say that God has, it doesn't matter how you are, God loves you, they should read this scripture and know that it really matters. Yeah. Minister Thomas, it matters. Es zählt. It really matters. So when they tell you that, tell them that, oh, but it matters. Es zählt. It's not true. Amen? Amen? Good. If you seek him, do you see the word if? Siehst du das Wort wenn? There's a lady here, they call her Mama Lulu. I don't know why they call her Mama Lulu. <laughs> Mama Lulu, do you see that? If, conditional clause. Jan, you see that? Conditional clause. If you seek him, he will be found by you. Ha. So the reason why you're not finding him, maybe you're not seeking him, man. Eh? Sure. You might not be seeking him enough or, or, or intensive enough. But if you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, oh glory. If you forsake him, is that tough to read? He will forsake you. Then the verse 3 is my point. 
Nummer 3. I like these verses because these kind of prophets, when they come, they are not like some of the prophets, they come and they don't even care whether you are living in sin or you are even living with somebody's husband or wife. They just tell you how God is going to bless you all your life. And you go back and say, wow, tell the woman, you see, you're always saying I should stop. I, I, even God speaks to me. <laughs> no way. Look at verse 3. For, as, for a long time, and this is the hammer, for a long time, Israel has been without. <laughs> Number one, for a long time, and we'll see the reason, Israel has been without a true God, and they didn't know it for a long time. So which God were they with? False God. And some of us for a long time, we have been without a true God. We are going up and down in the church. We are doing all the activities. We are roaming around everywhere. But for a long time, God is far away from us. Long time. For a long time. Long time. Mr. Kerry Kerry. Long time. Long time. And they don't even know. And they wussten es nicht. That's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. I pray it will not happen to you. I pray it will not happen to us. I pray it will not happen in this place. I pray it will not take place in this place. It will here not happen. Not with your family. And not with your family. These are church goers. They are just going to church. They don't know the true God. They are just church goers. They are just going and going. You see, they are just church goers. They don't be with the true God. No true encounter with the true God. <laughs> I pray it shall not be our portion. Without a teaching priest. And without... Law. I, I rest my case. I'll dissect the scripture and then we'll close. I'll do the rest some other time. <laughs> Listen. Let's start without the law. A law is his word. Is the commandment. The law is the commandments of the law. Of the Lord. So for a long time, God's people has been without the word. No teaching. You see, because the word was not available. They've been without the word. And where there is no law, there is lawlessness. Where there is no law, what do we find? Lawlessness. The church today is full of lawlessness. Because the word of God is not the basis for what is being done. Ideologies are the basis. What is good? What sign good? Everybody say God can speak to me. I'm a prophet. There is no law. Lawlessness. I've been born again in the 70s, 1979. There were times that the word was so strong in the church. People were disciplined. Righteousness, holiness, fear of God. Order was in the church. There was proper purity. Proper order. Proper submission. People were serving God without ulterior motives. People didn't have personal ambitions. They were in order. People were not church prostitutes. Don't think only about women. Oh. There are men too who are church prostitutes. Mm. They belong to every church member of none. Yeah. That's a church prostitute. Here one year, move. The next two years, move. Next another year, move. Today, there. I'm here and I'm there. I'm there and I'm here. Everywhere you find them, we call them church prostitutes. Lawlessness. They just wake up. God has called me too. They just wake up. Every we have too much lawlessness. Everybody does what he likes. Without law. Without law. Ohne Gesetz. And we have anarchy. We have anarchy. Anarchy in the kingdom of God today. Children don't das obey, nicht. don't respect elderly people Kinder anymore in the church. Gehorchen ihren Eltern nicht. No. There's so much disrespect and dishonor in the church. Respectlosigkeit. It's the body of Christ generally. 
Young people get more anointing, they start misbehaving. Die unterordnen sich nicht mehr. Die, they know more than everybody. Sie wissen mehr als jeder andere. People get to know a few scriptures in the Bible. Sie wissen vielleicht ein paar Verse in der Bibel. <laughs> and they are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Sie sind die Könige, they are mighty, und sind but they don't know that they are not Almighty. Aber sie wissen, and they don't sie know Menschen, that experience and unction and grace are not the same. Sie sich das Erfahrung und ähm, Salbung. There is too much lawlessness in the church. Es gibt zu viel and they try to gemacht. convince people that the resource they have justifies their lawlessness. Listen, I don't care if you raise the dead and you are lawless, God will reject you. No! You can't of the totem, the totem of, what do you call it? Yeah, you can do that, but if you are lawless, God doesn't accept you. He says, God, I don't know you, you workers of iniquity, that's lawlessness. No, I'm, I'm actually very passionate about it because, listen, the truth of the matter is right. we can justify whatever we want to do with scripture, we but is it lawful? It's not lawful. <laughs> it's not lawful. And young people prefer to go to young people for advice. Is it, well, which of them did that? Is it Roboam? Is it not Roboam who did that? Roboam is the one who did that. When the elderly people gave him proper advice, he didn't take it. He went to his own colleagues, young people. <laughs> yes, how many of you have read that? We were reading the scriptures, and I came across it again. I don't know if you came across it. It was in the Johnson towards, towards uh, uh, Fairbet. When you take right, you will see that story there. <laughs> Once you are driving on that road, you see it. Hallelujah. And, 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 and when the elderly people are advising properly, reduce it, deal with the people different. Proper advice, a new king, young man. You've got an opportunity, so you think, yeah, your young people say, double it, you, you double it. And what, what happened to him? His kingdom didn't go anywhere. Did you understand what I'm teaching you? If you're a young person, don't follow young people and take their advice. Look for some people who have experience have gone ahead of you, elderly people. Because if you want to be in line with God and walk in the will of God, those that are gone ahead of you, those that are elderly, those that are mature in the Lord, those, I'm talking, I'm not just talking about those that are anointed. Though. Because some of you, you think anointed. There are people who are anointed and they are not wise so they create annoyance anointing and wisdom is not the same thing it's nicht the same it's not to yes so lawless I can stay here the rest of my day but you see the reason is there was no teaching priest. I like that one. Without, for a long time, they have no teaching priest. That means the priests were supposed to be teaching them. As a royal priesthood, you are supposed to be teaching. Oh, glory to God. Who are you teaching? Are you teaching the people around you? Teach them the precepts of the Lord? As a royal priest, Mary, you are supposed to be teaching people the word of God, teaching them the principle of God, teaching them to walk in the ways of God, teaching them to observe the will of God. You, you have to teach them. You have to teach people. Don't just draw them to yourself for your own personal gain. That is why when people get up and say, I'm a pastor, Deshalb stehen Leute auf und sagen, ich bin ein Pastor. And then they get a complimentary card, you know, visiting card. Dann haben sie eine Visitenkarte. Very nice one, they write, Sehr Senior schön. Pastor. Leitender Pastor. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm asking, you, you just started this thing. Du hast auch erst gerade You are Senior gefahren. over who? Du bist Leiter oh, über wen? You are Senior Pastor, so who are you Senior over? Wen leitest du? Nee, 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 nicht Senior, Senior, Senior. Ältester. Okay, senior. No, whatever, hop pastor oder irgendwas. Pastor. Wenn du kein Wort findest, sag ich finde kein Wort. Und dann verstehe ich mich. <laughs> but, but watch this. You have like, I'm a senior pastor. Ich bin ein I'm, a, I'm a pastor. Apostle, Apostle General. 
Meanwhile, you have a church with six people, mit sechs Leuten, or even five, oder fünf, or ten, oder zehn. and you are a senior pastor. Over who? How many pastors do you have to become a senior? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Ich bin But that's Ernst. where the problem starts. Dort beginnt das and problem. such people, you have to teach them. Solche Leute musst du lernen. Say, my son, the ja, way up Lord. is down. The way up is down. If you go down and go down, the deeper you go down, the higher you go. Ask, 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 ask the, what do you call the name of that tree again? Oak tree. The oak tree. Ask the oak tree. The oak tree will tell you, hey, I am tall. The wind can pull me down because I went deeper. And when I was going deeper, they said I'm wasting my time. So haben sie gesagt, ich But they didn't know Zeit, that the wussten, deeper I went is proportional to the higher. You, you, are, you are a guava tree. <laughs> you will be broken down very soon. Or you are a wawa board. Are you understanding me? It's a serious matter. Teaching priest, we must teach. When you are not teaching the people around you, you are creating casualties. You are creating casualties. You are a royal priesthood so that you can teach people the precepts of God. You can teach them the ways of God. You are creating casualties if you are not teaching. You are redeemed to become a priest. And one of your assignments is to teach all the people that comes around you the ways of God. The ways of God. The purposes of God. The will of God. You have to teach them the precept of God. Precept upon precept. The priest, they will teach you how to behave. The priest will teach you how to dress. The priest will teach you how to approach the temple. They will teach you how to approach the altar. All these things is the duty of the priest. How to live your life. How to order. Who to marry. Who not to marry. Who to touch. Not to touch. What to do and what not to do. Listen, I have a long list of what the priest must teach in those days. Yeah. To go and touch a dead body, you are gone. You don't touch dead bodies. Many rules and regulations, they teach that. Amen. Let me conclude by saying this for tonight. Look at the scripture again, my friend. let's list the things. Number one, for a long time, a long season, a long time. Israel has been without a true God. I'm not sure how many people this is affecting today that for a long time they are without the true god they are just roaming about in the church roaming about but the true encounter with the true god is not there no wonder we don't see true transformation people are never stable if they are not transformed they are not stable today they are with you tomorrow they are not with you today they agree with you tomorrow they don't agree with you you are in the church for so many years if you have really been with the true god your heart would have been a established in the place you are god would have shown you this is your place or this is not your place i am telling you you don't stay in the church for 20 years and not know you were just at the bus stop waiting for another bus you are just you are <laughs> you are not know you haven't got to your station you are just at the bus stop so another bus come that is a little bit more you jump into it and bye bye you're gone that's the problem problem <laughs> A true God will give you an encounter. Ein wahrer Gott gibt dir ein Erlebnis. Yeah. Look at Jacob. Schau, ja, he said that an. God was here and he didn't even know. Gott war hier und ich nicht bemerkt. And when he got to know, what did he do? Und als merkt, what did he do? What did he do? What did he do? What did he do? I can't hear you. Kann ich nicht hören. Huh? Huh? He built an altar. Besides, he did something very significant. He took oil and poured it on what? Er hat Öl, Öl huh? Do you know that? <laughs> anyway, let me leave it that way. I, I have some other things to talk about. The flow of oil, to show you how the oil is supposed to flow. But anyway, I'll leave that out because it takes too long and I need to close. But without the true God, and without what? A teaching priest, without the Lord. So much is in this scripture. Do you see he didn't say without a prophet? So they had a prophet. Did you see that? So they had a prophet. He didn't say without a king. So they had a king. They had all that. But the problem was still there. A reform was needed. Why? Because of the absence of a teaching 
priest. Wegen der Abwesenheit eines der That's why Priesters. today you have been made a royal what? Deshalb priest. bist du ein königlicher Priester. I'm done. Time is out of my hands. Let's be on our feet. Amen. Father, we want to thank you tonight for what we've learned. And we pray you help us to be the true royal priesthood. As a redemptive right, you made us priests and kings. And as priests, we offer sacrifices of praise. As priests, we make intercession. As priests, we stimulate spirituality, spiritual growth and worship. As priests, we teach. We instruct as preach, as priests, we sanctify ourselves and present our bodies to you as a living sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, for making me a priest, a royal priesthood. In Jesus' name, why don't you put your hands together and give him praise? Let's receive the offering. Thank you once again for listening to this message, as we hope it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to help you grow in the word and to be a disciple for Christ. It is your love and support that makes the word of God reach to others. Please visit us on www.houseofsolution.de On Facebook, House of Solution, YouTube, Host TV. For more products and partnership, kindly visit these social media platforms. And please don't forget to share, like and comment. God richly bless you.